In this video, we're going to talk about ground ladder deployment, specifically what we call the high-low or combination carry. Now, obviously, there are a lot of different ways to deploy ground ladder. Know that this is just simply one more option. By no means is this technique perfect for every situation, but what I do like about the high-low is that I can make the transition from the carry to the raise a little smoother, faster, and more efficient. What it simply involves is the combination of two carries, the shoulder and the straight arm. What's also nice about the high-low is that you can perform it while carrying the ladder either flat or on end via the beam. Here the firefighters are demonstrating a high-low beam carry. The firefighter at the base performs a straight arm while the firefighter at the tip uses a high shoulder. It's not necessary for the firefighters to position on the same side of the ladder as it won't impact the carry. It's just a matter of personal preference. Here the firefighters are showing a high-low flat carry. This technique requires the firefighters to position on opposite sides of the ladder. Again, the firefighter at the base performs a straight arm, while the firefighter at the tip places a ladder on their shoulder. The firefighter at the base grabs a rung near the beam closest to their body, while the firefighter at the tip places the opposite beam on their shoulder and grabs a rung near the center. One of the elements that can dictate how you carry and raise a ladder is your approach to the building. Another factor that you may also want to consider is how you prefer to position the fly section of the ladder in relation to the building itself. For example, on both my career and volunteer departments, it's normal standard operating procedure for us to position the fly section away from the building, while other departments in certain situations prefer to position the fly section toward the building. Now each one has advantages and disadvantages depending on the circumstances involved. Regardless of your preference, one of the questions you may be asking is how does my approach to the building, along with the orientation of the fly section, affect how I'm going to carry and raise the ladder. So let's walk through it. If you're coming in from the side or doing a parallel approach to the building, you may want to consider carrying the ladder via the beam, as this can allow you to place the ladder while minimizing your movements at the scene. If you can make a direct approach to the building, you may want to consider carrying the ladder flat, as it can make it easier to spot place and center the ladder in line with your objective. Another factor you want to take into consideration is how your ladders are stored and carried on the apparatus. On this truck, the ladders are stored flat with the fly section up. To make your operation more efficient, when you remove the ladder, rotate it so the fly section is in the position you want it to be before you make your approach to the building. The mindset here is to take a few more moments at the apparatus to minimize the amount of movements you need to make in the hazard zone. Once you get near the structure, you're dealing with a lot of hazards, such as uneven or slippery terrain, high winds, reduced visibility because of smoke conditions, additional obstructions, or hazards such as overhead wires. So the more movements you're making in the hazard zone, the greater your chances for getting into trouble. So the quicker you can transition from carrying to extending the ladder, the faster you can go to work and the safer and smoother the overall operation will be. So let's take a look at it. As the firefighters remove the ladder, which direction they decide to rotate the fly section is based on their approach to the building. In this situation, they're making a parallel approach to the number two or Bravo side of the building. By rotating the fly section out, the ladder is automatically in the position they want it to be before they transition from the carry to the raise. If your preference was the fly section toward the building, you would have rotated the ladder in the opposite direction. From this angle, as the firefighters make their approach, you can see how smooth the transition actually is from the carry to the raise. Here the firefighters are making a direct approach to the number one or alpha side of the building. They've chosen to perform a high-low flat carry. By rotating the fly section down, it's in the position they want it as they transition from the carry to the raise. If it was your preference, 
to position the fly section toward the building, rotating the ladder wouldn't be necessary. As you can see from this perspective, carrying and raising the ladder flat along with proper position of the fly section can make it easier to spot and center the ladder in line with your objective. The high-low also works well for ladders that are stored and carried on an engine or a pumper, typically on a vertical or hydraulic ladder rack as you see here. Now most engines usually carry a 24-foot extension and 14-foot roof. However, there are some pumpers that carry a 28-foot extension and 16-foot roof. Regardless of the length, what's nice is that the width of the roof ladder allows it to set within the bed or main section of the extension ladder, so the ladders seat and marry together. This is not only nice for storage, but it also works well when you want to carry and raise both ladders simultaneously. This works best when the extension ladder is set on the rack first with the fly section facing the apparatus. This way the roof ladder can set within the bed or main section of the extension ladder. The added benefit of having the roof ladder on the outside is that if you're assigned vertical ventilation and you want a ladder on the roof, you can engage the roof hooks before you even start to carry the ladder. This way you're one step ahead. Probably the biggest advantage though of being able to carry and raise more than one ladder at a time is when you're short-handed or you're dealing with a serious fire where you have numerous victims trapped at various windows and you need to deploy multiple ladders with limited personnel. So with that being said, let's take a look at this deployment technique in action. When performing a high-low beam carry, you're compressing the top and bottom beams of both ladders together. This holds them in place throughout the carry and the raise, making for a seamless transition and a more efficient deployment. If you're going to the roof, you could take this one step further and engage the roof hooks before removing the ladders from the apparatus. A high-low flat carry works just as well with two ladders as gravity holds both ladders together. Again, a direct approach along with proper position of the fly section can make it easier to spot and line up your primary ladder. The last thing I want to go through is how to rotate a vertical ladder. Much of what we've demonstrated up to this point was intended to help prevent having to rotate a ladder in a hazard zone, but we all know in the real world that many times this is unavoidable. It may seem a little remedial, but more than one firefighter has struggled during training and on the fire ground with this operation. So we want to take you through some body positioning and some techniques that will help you execute this procedure smoothly and efficiently. The firefighter pulling on the ladder initiates the movement, while the second firefighter simply steps into the rotation and assists with stabilizing the ladder. Start by placing your body in a position where you're going to finish the rotation. Then tilt the ladder slightly on one beam as it's rotated no more than 90 degrees at a time. The rotation is smooth when it can be done in one movement. Notice the starting and finishing positions.